Church, it's Mark at the Crossing, and uh, we want to welcome you today in this season of uh, social distancing. Uh, we're still uh, being the church, and even though we can't meet at our one campus, the Crossing, uh, today we're meeting in hundreds of campuses across our region, and thank you uh, for, turning, uh, for tuning in. What a day of rejoicing it will be when we can be back together all on the same Sunday in one space, and we look forward to that. But uh, thank you for tuning in this morning, and uh, we've got a great service plan. I'm so grateful for our staff and ministry team and worship team for uh, being available to put this together. I'm going to be uh, back to you at the end of this session to lead into a prayer time for all of us. Uh, but first, uh, here's Rachel. Good morning, church. I'm Rachel, your online church host, and welcome back this Sunday. Great to have all of you here. Not today, Satan. Not today. I know this is such a tough time, and I hope you all are hanging in there and feeling loved and encouraged and stay strong. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus. It's going to be an incredible morning. So great to have you. Before we lead into a time of worship, let's check out something amazing that happened last Sunday. Stephen, and uh, he's meeting me to here today on this Sunday to be baptized into Christ. And uh, Stephen, I just want to ask you, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Yes. Do you believe that what he did on the cross totally takes care of all of our sin? Yes. Are you saying today that uh, you receive him as Lord and Savior and that today you want to be baptized into Christ for the forgiveness of all your sin and the gift of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Because of your faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Till that day comes 
never let go through the calm, through the storm. Oh no, you never let go in every high, every low. Oh no, you never let go of you never let go of me. You are my star. 
opportunity to stay devoted to something even though we're not here on Sunday morning. Every Sunday we get to uh, partake together in the Lord's Supper um, and we're going to do that now. Uh, so if you want to pause the video and get something, uh, maybe use a grape juice and a cracker to, to do this with us, that would be awesome. I'm going to read from Mark 14. Uh, Jesus is instituting the Lord's Supper with his disciples and, and listen to this. As they were eating, he took bread, 
And after blessing it, broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this, it's my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. And truly I say to you, do not drink again, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Uh, so, so here's Jesus in, in this time, hours before his arrest, hours before his death. And he institutes something not just for his disciples, but for his church. And it's something that we are devoted to today and we get to take even though we're not together as a family. So I want you to raise um, your, the piece of bread. And something that right before he gave them the bread and the juice is he gave thanks. And in this time of craziness and anxiety and, and unknown, I, I would love to give thanks today as we partake and remember what Jesus has done for us. And this piece of bread has great resemblance in our faith. Uh, this resembles the body of Christ that was broken for us. And let's take that together. And we can take the juice. And again, Jesus took the cup and he, and he gave thanks um, for, to the Lord for everything. And even in this time of anxiety, we can take the cup that represents the blood of Jesus that was spilled for us. And we take that together. Let me pray. Dear Jesus, you are incredible. And Lord, in this time of anxiety and craziness, we want to look to you and give thanks. And Lord, we thank you so much for uh, the Lord's Supper and our the way we can remember your sacrifice for us and your blood that you poured out for many. I uh, thank you for this morning that we can gather together in our houses and be your church still. Thank you for everything you do for us. Yeah, I pray. Amen. Hey, church. Adam here. Really excited to be with you this morning. I'm praying that your soul is refreshed as we get to worship together. And, and what a blessing it is for us to meet like this, even amidst the strange, isolated time. And I'm praying you've been living out of faith and not fear. That you've been living out of in step with the spirit God has given us uh, in this in this weird time we're in. I know many of you are experiencing such a, such a change in your schedules and the amount of time you're spending with family uh, is unusual. And that can be hard, like really hard. With being forced to spend so much time together and not being used to it, you may find your, your temper is a little bit shorter, your patience a little thin. You know, things are so different right now. Maybe, Maybe you're a parent and you're doing the school thing and you feel a little bit like this, dear sister. Let us pray. Father God, I am a child of God. What I am not is a homeschool teacher, God. I'm at home, but Lord, ain't no teaching going on around here. Father God, I am your humble servant. What I am not is a math teacher, God. Lord God, the spirit of common core has attacked our household. And right now, the only thing we have in common is frustration and no answer to the math problem, Lord God. I ask that you send down your angels of the carryover, Lord. Teach her that if you carry the one over to the tenth place, you can get the answer, Lord God. Lord God, I am a layman in your vineyard. What I am not is the cafeteria lady, Lord. Yet again, the devil has attacked and sent down a tapeworm onto my child, Lord God. And I need you to help her to understand, Lord, that just because there's a refrigerator don't mean the door got to be open. And just because there's a stove don't mean the eye has to be on. I am not Dennis, I hop, Shonis, nor Waffle House, Lord God. Lord God, right now, I need her to understand that it's times are tough right now, Lord God. But I see if things continue the way that they are going, Lord God. Not only am I your child, but I'm going to be an inmate because I'm going to jail, Lord God. I, I don't look good in orange. I don't look good in a jumpsuit, Lord God. But Lord, I ask that you, that you change the way things are going right now, Father God, and bless every teacher because they got a special place in heaven. Ain't no way that I could do it, Lord God. Ain't no way. Amen. 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 
Amen. You may find yourself wearing all these hats that you're not used to wearing and you're a lot out of sorts and feeling a bit unprepared of what, what you need to be able to do what you need to do. This quarantine has everyone on edge and, and that's not good. Just the other day, the kids and I were out playing in our yard and, and two ladies from out of town came down our dead end road looking for directions for a certain road. They, they rolled down the window and, and rudely demanded to know where this road was. And so I said, I, I took one step towards the car and hands went up, you can stay right there. They were obviously on edge. And I said, well, ma'am, I think it's the, the dirt road you just passed back there. Why isn't there a sign? And at this point, I'm getting a little on edge myself. And what I wanted to say was, listen, lady, you're the one who's lost. Don't come down here yelling at me in my front yard. But I didn't say that. I played it way more passive aggressive, which isn't right either. Ma'am, I don't know why there's not a sign. I'm not responsible for all the road signs in Delaware. To which, uh, and I kid you not, they, they drove off in a huff and, and they, they came to the point near the dirt road and they went right and took the dirt road that went around the farm field as opposed to the left-hand turn of the dirt road that had houses and driveways on it. But I just couldn't believe how, how mean these ladies were. For no reason, you're looking for my help. And then there's my, my kids. You want my help with grammar. You want my help with geometry. You want my help with all this, this technology to do school. And, and you're going to get snippy with me? Anyone else having these kinds of feelings lately, whether at home or in the grocery store or with news or just out and about? High stress leads to low patience, which leads to well, it leads to being snippy with one another. It leads to us reacting out of our own frustrations, and in the end, in the end, our relationships suffer. So today, I want to give you three words from the Apostle Paul, three words that, that ought to be our mantra when it comes to our approach to people. And this isn't a quarantine sermon. This is a, an every day of every season, during every conversation, with every person, beginning in your home sermon. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul's talking about his time with the people there in Thessalonica. A quick sidebar, if you are getting bored and need a good laugh, challenge yourself and everyone else in your house to say the word Thessalonica three times fast. It's a really fun word to say. Thessalonica was a bustling commercial coast town on the Aegean Sea. And the Apostle Paul and some of his companions spent some time there with the people. Uh, they didn't want to be a burden to them, so, so they, they worked. They earned, earned their own wages while they were there. They shared the gospel with them. The Bible says they also shared their lives too. And so they had this great community. There was great affection uh, for one another there in Thessalonica. And this is the oldest letter Paul ever wrote. It's the first letter he ever wrote to a church, 1 Thessalonians. And in it, in the beginning, he's talking about how he related to the people there while he was with them. And in these two verses, verse 11 and 12, Paul uses three words that just jump out to me as three words that ought to be our plan for relating with people. Three words that are, that are refrigerator worthy, for sure. See if you can pick them out. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11, Paul writes, For you know that we dealt with each other, with each of you, as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. I know you got them. Say them out loud, right where you are. Encouraging, comforting, and urging. What if before you responded to those snippy strangers in the car, or before you, you responded to those snippy kids, or, or before you acted snippy towards someone else, you, you did something your grandmother taught you, and you thought before you spoke, and really evaluate what you were about to say. What if your plan every day, especially during this time when so many people are really on edge and short-tempered, and then just for the rest of your days, that you always dealt with people with encouraging, comforting, and urging them to live lives worthy of God. Really quick, let's, let's just unpack what that means. You know what encouragement is. 
Encouragement is, is building up, it's supporting, it's giving confidence and giving hope. And you've heard it said a lot, and it's so true, everyone needs encouragement. You will never find a person anywhere, ever, who doesn't need building up and hope. And we have the greatest news about the greatest person who offers the greatest hope for the greatest future imaginable. Actually, it's not even imaginable. It's beyond our imagination. It's unimaginable what eternity is going to be like with Jesus. And as ambassadors of Christ, we get to share that with people. Not only that, but we have God's heart and God's spirit in us to help us understand what people need and be able to offer support and confidence. The, the Apostle Paul also says in Ephesians chapter 4 that the only words that ought to come out of our mouths are, are those that build others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. Encouraging, comforting, and urging. Comforting means easing stress and grief or, or pain. I like the word easing because you'll never likely uh, be able to completely get rid of someone else's stress or pain or grief, but you can certainly make things a little lighter for them. Simple things like showing up, praying over them, sending a card, asking how you might help, putting an arm around a shoulder, uh, offering a listening ear without any, hey, here's what you should do to fix this advice, really goes a long way. People need to know that they're not alone with what they're carrying. Just this past Thursday, uh, I had a funeral to preside over, and it wasn't really a funeral per se. It was more of a, a graveside with a few people because of the social distancing thing. But my aim, now that I think about it, was, and really as I think about any funeral, is really to give exactly these things that Paul mentions. For all the people gathered there, they, they need encouragement and comfort and urging to do, to live lives worthy of God. And I tell you this because... You and I shouldn't wait for a funeral to have these conversations with people. This should just be how we relate to people all the time. Encouraging, comforting, and urging. Urging means to earnestly persuade someone to do something, to push them in a specific direction. And Paul says, as ambassadors of Christ, we're to be persuading people to live lives worthy of God. That means living a life that is suited to, that, that matches up with being called a Christian, urging them to make every effort for their faith and their lives and their words to match up. I know I need this myself a lot. We all need reminding, especially in this time, that we don't have a once-a-week faith. That, though it's weird we're not meeting on Sundays, that's okay, because we have an everyday faith. And that our faith is so much more than, than just believing in something with just our minds, but rather trusting in someone so completely that he alters the way we live our lives. Because our faith without action isn't faith at all. The Bible says that kind of faith is, is dead. And so we urge others to live lives worthy of God, who has called them into his kingdom and glory. Let's just bring this home. Do your children need encouragement and comfort and urging? Does your spouse need encouragement and comforting and urging? Do you need encouragement, comfort, and, and urging to live a life worthy of God? Do those strange, angry ladies in the car, they need comfort and encouragement and, and urging to live life worthy of God? Does your pastor need encouragement and comfort and urging? Do your brothers and sisters in Christ, your friends on Facebook, your extended family, your enemies, your kids' teachers, the people who you see that are still tirelessly working during this crisis, the people at home who are, are fearful because they can't work during this, this crisis, do they all need encouragement and comfort and urging? <laughs> of course they do. And as ambassadors of Christ, that's what we offer. And so today, with your words, and when it's appropriate and safe in May, with your hugs and your close acts of service, encourage the people around you. Do the best you can to, to comfort them in their distress and be bold and loving enough to urge them to live lives worthy of God, who, who is calling them into his kingdom and glory. Church, I think we can all agree that the Apostle Paul had a pretty powerful impact on, on his world as a follower of Jesus living out these, these three words. In fact, his approach is still impacting uh, you and I 
right now. My prayer is that we would use this time of quarantine to change maybe our perspective on how we view it and how we relate to people. Starting right there where you are in your home, that we would always be encouraging and comforting and urging others to live lives worthy of God. Let me pray for us. Father, you are so good. And though this, this time we live in right now is stressful and, and creating anxiety and fear and, and, and struggle with our own emotions, God, uh, you are with us. You are God. You are sovereign and all-powerful and mighty. And you are working through this. In fact, uh, I pray that this morning your words from Paul would, would impact us in our homes that we would constantly be people, encouraging others, comforting others, and urging others to live lives worthy of God, starting right there in our own homes. God, would you give power and a, a resounding yes to this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi, church family. I'm Sue Ganser, Connections Minister at The Crossing. I am really missing you, and I know you're missing each other too. With that thought in mind, we ask you to join our church staff in our Connect Poor Challenge. Each day, reach out to four brothers and sisters in Christ, electronically via text, phone, email. Let them know you're thinking about them and just say hi. What a great way to build deeper relationships. Our online church directory is a great resource for contact information. If you're not currently registered, uh, send an email to sue at lccnow.com and we'll set up an account for you. On another note, our compassion team stands ready to serve you. We especially want to take care of our at-risk population. We want you staying home and safe. If you're in need of grocery items or something from the drugstore, we'd be happy to run out and pick those up for you and deliver them to your front door. If you have a need, email lcc at lccnow.com. Be well, be safe, and we'll see you soon. Hey guys, I wanted to jump on real quick to let you know what our plan for student ministry is during this quarantine time. We still got a plan. On Sunday nights at 6 p.m., we'll be posting a 15-minute Devo on our YouTube channel. Uh, you'll find links to that on Instagram and Facebook as well. And it'll just be a 15 minute Devo with a couple questions that your student can maybe wrestle with. Maybe it's something that you guys talk through together as a family. But that's Sunday night at 6 p.m. And then on Wednesday, we'll have small groups that will meet through the Zoom app. If you're not familiar with what Zoom is, it's a video conferencing app. You can download it on your phone, your tablet, your computer, and it allows us to meet with students face-to-face -face as we dive into scripture together. That'll be Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Any information that you will need for student ministry will be on our Facebook group, Crossing Students, or you can find it on our Instagram page, at The Crossing Students. If there's any other questions that you have, that I can answer, you can always email me at austin at lccnow.com. Thank you. Hey everyone at The Crossing, good morning. This is Solomon Haynes. I'm gonna show you how to access our social media really quick. We have Facebook and Instagram, and you should definitely give us a follow, especially in this time. So when you're in your Facebook app, click the search button and type in The Crossing. And then it should pop up right here, boom. Give us a like, and then you'll get access to all of our updates when we post them. And we're posting a whole lot right now just because of uh, the times today. You can get things from Chip, Adam, uh, services, it's really cool. So that's Facebook for The Crossing. Now if you wanna follow the student page, just simply Type in student after and crossing students right here. You can ask to join the group if you're a student and really curious about coming in. Cool, that's Facebook, let's go to Instagram. Okay, cool. So you type in this search in your Instagram app and you type in the crossing, crossing DE, boom, right here. This is where you can get updates 
really cool stuff, little tidbits from Pastor Mark, and that's, that's cool. Now, if students, it's already there, but if you just type in students, boom, right there. Follow it, it's not a group. You can join if you wanna keep up to date with what's going on with the Crossing students. Cool, grace and peace be to you. Talk to you later. Have a great Sunday. Great being with you. Good morning, church. Uh, we're in the prayer room. I'm with my wife, Dawn. I'm also known as Dawn's husband. I'm Steve, Steve Bell. And we are in the prayer room. I have prayer cards, but the campus is closed. We can't fill them out. We can't put our prayers in the, in the slot, uh, the prayer slot, the box, so we can our team can be praying for you. We do have a prayer team here at Lewis at the crossing. We just want you to know that uh, we're poised to pray with you and for you. Send your prayers via email to prayer at lccnow.com. We are one in Christ. We are one body. I just think about the three musketeers and they had their swords to fight the battles and we have a king that fights our battles and there is not a sword. We don't need a sword. There's not a sword that compares to the one that our king has. Send your prayers to LCC. <laughs> uh, email your prayers to prayer at lccnow.com. Dawn? Hi, church. I so miss being together with all of you. Uh, it has been a difficult time not being able to be all together as a church family, but we know that we are still being the church, and I am so excited about the many stories that I am hearing about your generosity and your continued faithfulness to the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus. Thank you for loving on people. Thank you for continuing to support our ministry here at The Crossing. All of this is possible because of our amazing, generous family. And I know that you can't walk into the church building right now and, and put your offering in the offering slot, but we do have other ways to give. You can mail your giving uh, to The Crossing, P.O. Box 95, Milton, Delaware, 19968. Or you can go on our website, thecrossingnow.com, click on the Give tab. Once you set up an account, it's so easy to give. A couple clicks and you're ready to go. Thank you for being faithful stewards to our Lord and trusting Him with all that you have. Uh, we know that Jesus reigns, that He is in control. I can't wait to be together worshiping our mighty God with all of you again. In the meantime, stay safe and be blessed. Uh, we do have a, a God that's in control and uh, I'm so thankful for that. People running around with masks and gloves on, it just spooks me out. But I'm so thankful we can still come to God and pray and rejoice. So let's do that right now. Father God, we rejoice in you because we know you're in control and that you strengthen us and you save us and you rescue us and you're, you're poised. You know what we need. You know where we are. You know exactly what's happening. God, we trust in you. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey church, uh, thank you for spending this morning with us. I hope our time together has been a real blessing for you. I'm so grateful for our staff and worship team and ministry team and tech team, everybody putting this together. Uh, if you don't mind, would you go ahead, uh, before you turn things off, would you uh, forward this message or post this message or share this message, uh, just an attempt of reaching more people and going wider. Uh, thank you for doing that. Just uh, what a great thing and opportunity we have uh, for technology. Uh, let's close today uh, with a prayer and a blessing on our country, on our church, on our families, on you. Let's pray. Lord, today we humbly bow, confessing that you are God. And we pray today protection on our country, uh, on our world, on our church, on our families against this virus. Lord, in a time that seems so uncertain, would you empower us to be so certain of our faith in you? Lord, empower us to keep our eyes on you, our ears in your word, and our hearts in a state of rejoicing of, because of who you are. Again, I pray your protection and your comfort on everyone listening. And may we be strengthened by your word, by your presence, by your spirit. Uh, keep us strong. May we be in power, the church you designed us to be even in quarantine. Lord, we love you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. We love you, church. Be strong. Be the church. See you next time.